Hey everyone, you're watching Andy's Fishing and Wild Cook and we're going out in the kayak. Everything you saw me put in there is all I've got. I've got five litres of water, fishing rods and cameras and a little bit of bedding. So we're going to go to a tiny miniature island and camp on that for the night. We'll fish a little on the way there and then hopefully we'll get some um, live bait and try and catch a shark off the beach and maybe maybe pop some big GTs. It's, it's a very small island. So I should be able to walk around the whole thing in like, yeah, 10 minutes or something like that. <laughs> Andy's fishing and wild cook. We're in the middle of the bay here, and guys, have I got an offer for you. One time offer of this superb yacht. I'll even throw in a couple of hundred oysters. It's got radar. I'll show it to you in a second. <laughs> well, I like to joke around. It's actually pretty sad to have a nice yacht like that. Two masts. Yeah, whether they've got a hole in it or yeah, the timber rotted or something, it's yeah, it is a sad thing, but let's have a fish here anyway. I've got a little pink and clear soft plastic, um, 3 8 ounce jig head, and I'm pretty sure there'll be something hanging off this yacht. Oh, right there, right on the edge of it. So it looks like surprisingly there's nothing here. Let's um, we'll go and find a nice, nice bit of reef. Check this out guys, it's a massive cowtail ray. Oh, you can't see it. It's in that patch of dirt there. We're um, on the edge of the reef here, and it's starting to rain. They're not heavy rain showers, but it's probably going to get a bit annoying over this trip. So we'll see how we go. I think I might set up camp pretty quickly. Just have a little fish on the way there, and then hopefully catch a fish over there. So guys, this here is actually the first island we've come to. It's um, yeah, reasonably big. We're not going to stay on this one. I might have a fish along here. The one we're going to is over that way. It's very small. Little miniature island. You can see a bit of pink coral down there. Brown coral over there, white coral. It's uh, not the best weather in the world. <laughs> oh, I seem to have really bad luck with weather. Just giving that rod twitch, twitch, and then a little pause, twitch, twitch, little pause. Oh, yeah, got him. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna sharpen those hooks. So, I started with a brand new hook, but usually hooks aren't sharp straight out of the packet. And yeah, that's, that's yeah, barely sharp. Oh, that was a nice hit. That was on the drop. Yep. Oh, and another one. Got him. Yes. Oh, that time. That time. Three hits, and I finally hooked him. Oh, what have we got? Oh, strong fish, sweet lip. Oh, I think they need to be 30 on these. Let's get him in and have a look. Actually, you know what? No. We'll measure him. I think he might be lunch. I was going to do sashimi for lunch, and he would be perfect. Yeah, he's like 31. All right, let's keep him. Oh, check that out. They've bitten my plastic in half. I don't know if he was the one that bit it in half, or his friends ate the other half. Anyway, we've got a fish, and we got lunch. Let's go to the island and set up camp. Despite the rain, it's actually quite nice out here. It's calm. It's uh, definitely not cold, although if I stay wet, I'll probably get a bit cold. But yeah, it's very nice out here. I wish I could show you more of the reef, but the sun's just not out. Um, yeah, we just come off, with, off the drop off there, and it was you know, maybe 30 centimeters deep, and now we're in about oh, 12 meters. It's pretty cool. And the island's only about 500 meters away. Oh, you can see the other island behind us. <laughs> That's one we've just come from. That's cool. And there's a third island over here. If you have a look at that. There you go. Third island. Oh, sorry, second island. Third island. That's the one we're going to. I'll have a look at the size of this turtle here. We'll see how close we can get. He's massive. Massive turtle. Here, guys. Have a look. Oh, he's gone. He's gone. Oh, that was huge. That was a monster turtle. We're not far from the island now. There's the last island we've just come from. And we're going that way. Yeah, 
very rainy, very rainy fight. <laughs> Have a look behind me. Look at that. That way is rainy. That way is rainy. It's just just all rain everywhere. Ooh, let's set up camp. There you go. We're almost here. This is the whole island. Everything you can see is from those rocks, the beach, and then those rocks. It's about oh, 80 meters maximum. So yeah, that's what we're going to stay the night. Pretty cool. And here we are. Ooh. Very corally beach. And the whole beach is basically just coral. Oh, look at that. And the odd, the odd shell thrown in. Look at that. Nice little shell. Cool. Let's get this up. And go and explore. We're going to check out my new home. Yeah, the whole beach is just coral. It's not even sand, it's just coral. That's cool. We'll have a look at this end of the island. We've got some massive rocks here. Oh, and I'll tell you what, it is actually getting cold now that I've stopped paddling. Look, look at these boulders here. Look at this one. That's huge. Okay, let's go to the other side of the island. I said 10 minutes, but I reckon 5 minutes will be there. Not even 3 minutes. Oh, it's actually really hard walking on this stuff. There's some big bits there. Massive bits of coral. But yeah, a little bit hard on the feet. And here we are. This is the other end of the island. Very big island at all. Might climb up on here, see what sort of view we get. Ah, here we go. Look at that. Very cool. All rain coming in. All rain. And I am really cold. My shirt is wet. Let's see if we can set the. Um, I've got a hoochie. Let's see if we can set that up. Why do I do these things? A bit of adventure, but yeah, it's cold and wet. We'll get this done before the next lot of rain comes. It's coming pretty quick, actually. I don't know if the camera recorded it before, but this is the best spot that I could find. There's um, a couple of trees over there, and I've managed to set the hoochie up. So we've got about a metre and a half of space under there, and it's basically just to keep the wind and the rain out. Let's go in and have a look. There we go. And I am actually thinking I might just sleep on the floor, like on on the shell grid here. Um, there haven't been any mosquitoes, no sand flies. So I think it could be worth a shot tonight. I'm quite hungry now, so sashimi and I might do a pot of noodles. We've got our sweet lip, the kayak's up nice and high. So um, it's actually cleared up a little bit and what I'm gonna do is just cut the top part of the sweet lip off and that'll be my sashimi. Um, we will have a fish after lunch, have a walk around the island with a, a rod or two um, and I might save half this fish in case we don't get another fish for later on for dinner. I've actually brought a few nice ingredients for dinner, so even if we don't catch anything else, we'll be right, but I wouldn't mind catching something else as well, because what I want to do is use part of this guy as shark bait tonight. I can't say I've ever had grassy emperor or sweet lip as sashimi before, so this will be interesting. I'll get a fair bit off this guy. So this guy was swimming around less than an hour ago and he is really fresh. Just got a couple of leaves here and we're just cutting little slivers off the meat like that. And that's our sashimi. Very simple and should be very delicious. Don't know if the camera can pick that up but you can, you can see right through that, that meat, nice and translucent. 
I mean, yeah, it can't, can't be anything other than super fresh. Now this wouldn't be proper sashimi if I didn't have some wasabi. I like quite a bit in there. Look at that, nice big dollop. And I brought some soy sauce. I like to mix these two together so that I end up with like a, a light brown paste. Nice and spicy. Let's give that a mix around. I'm actually quite cold, so what I'm gonna do is make a pot of noodles as well. So sushi and Malaysian laksa style noodles. Hope the sound's okay and it's not too windy for you guys. So let's try some sweet lip or grassy emperor. First time having this is sashimi. Mmm. Mmm. Super fresh. You can actually, yeah, see right through that. Mm. Just the right amount of wasabi with um, soy sauce. I got the dark soy. It's a little dark, but it's it's all right. Normally, I prefer the light soy. Mm. But that's actually sweet. Yeah, quite sweet. Mm. And really, really um, full body. Mm. Ooh, I like sweet lip. As sashimi. Yeah. I am really cold. I tell you what, I can smell some flowers in the bush here. I'll, I'll have to try and find them after I have lunch. Um, they smell, again, really sweet, different, you know, like a flowery sweet. That's a, a sugary sweet taste, the, the fish. But yeah, these will warm me up a little bit and we'll go for a fish. We'll throw the big rod first, I think. See if there's any big GTs or maybe even mackerel here. Yeah, I think almost any fish sashimi would be, would be quite good. Hmm. Any saltwater fish, that is. I'm going to finish this, and I'll see you out there. I'm going to change clothes, I think. I'm just saturated and wet. Look how dark that is. <laughs> but yeah, it tastes, tastes really wholesome. Mm. Okay, let's have a fish around the island. I've got the big rod out, big lure, and I'm not, t this is the only stuff I'm taking because <laughs> it's 50 meters that way and 30 meters that way. I, um, yeah, I, I don't have to walk very far at all. Just set the drag. Now, there's actually a really nice bommy just here. And look at this current line. That's ripping through. So, oh, that's pretty good. There's every chance of a big trevally, big coral trout, mackerel. I'll just give it a, give it a little play and see what happens. If you like this sort of video let me know um, yeah like going to an island and fishing from the island that could be a new new thing for me I sort of do it now but yeah it's a little little different oh this water looks nice here you can see the tides actually come up a lot since we got here that's um we go right through here this is a bit of a gauntlet cast this one and I've changed clothes you'll, you'll see my pants new shirt and it's raining already <laughs> i don't know what's going to happen here if i hook something big in this oh yes oh, oh. Oh. i mean that could be a trevally or could even be coral trout oh. oh straight in here oh what is it oh it is a coral trout oh two oh holy cow look at this look at this oh my <laughs> Look at that! I just got two coral trout on the same lure. Holy cow! Oh, well, <laughs> I'm gonna let this big guy go because um, we don't want to kill a big fish like that. But this guy here, he is the 40, 41, maybe, maybe a bit bigger. He is perfect. Oh, okay. Off, off you go, big guy. <laughs> there he goes. That was actually textbook. Look at that. Off you go. Off you go. Come on. Come on. There you go. Oh, through the gauntlet. Of <laughs> that is wild. And that's only my first cast through there. Oh, 
Wow, I like this island fishing. Check this guy out. Oh, that's the lively lures slick stick there. Two coral trout on the same lure. That is insane. I actually thought I had a piece of weed when I got this guy first. Or the other guy, whichever, I don't know. They, I don't know if they both grabbed at the same time. But that's insane. So yeah, we've got a uh, nice fish for fish curry tonight. Woo! Just cut this guy's throat, let him bleed out a little bit, and take him back to camp. I'm gonna have another bit of a fish. I'd like to see if I can hook a um, yeah, big trevally. Put this guy here. And uh, yeah, there's actually more rain coming right now. That's, um, yeah, it's definitely rain coming. So we'll have a quick fish, hopefully before that comes. How insane is this little mini island? Look at this. Beautiful trees, massive rocks, and two coral trout in the same spot, on the same lure. Wow. Actually, I'm gonna have a go around here. We've got uh, like a nice bit of current coming around the point. And then I might even go on the other side of the island and see what it's like over there. I know there's some big, big GTs hanging around here. Anyway, I've just dumped my rod on the ground here. <laughs> Cause I'm the only one on this island and the island's literally like, it takes me 30 seconds to go from one end to the other on this side where the beach is. Anyway, let's um, yeah, I'll have a cast over here. Okay, let's so see what's around these rocks here. It's actually nice deep blue water right next to those rocks oh, let's see there's no way i'll get another fish straight away I'll, literally this is the next cast after those coral trout it's just oh i still can't believe i got two straight away that's just that's just insane insane i might let that one sink down a little bit I'm now walking around the other side of the island. <laughs> this is, is actually a lot of fun. Just You just jump from one side to the other. It's wild. Actually, this is a bit wild. Nice current line over here. Let's sum here. We'll go down here. As you can see, this, this side of the island is all covered in big rocks. Um, these actually look a little bit slippery here. But yeah, just massive rocks. And the ones where I caught that trout are literally just over here. Let's um, we'll have a cast from, from here, I think. There we go. Yes. Oh, yeah, this is looking good. walking around a little bit more going over these massive rocks here oh and check this out look at this this fig tree has pretty much just like grown like a waterfall over this this big rock and i think the roots yeah look at the roots the roots have split that rock or at least they've, they've gone in there after the rock split but yeah nice little nice little alcove in here oh i love exploring oh Oh yeah, yeah, there's a bommy right out here where the current comes around. Let's see, yeah, we'll see if we can get down this way. Oh, this looks like a cool spot. A lot of turbulent current, lots of big rocks, lots of big gaps. Let's see if we... Oh shit! Oh! My lure just snapped! Oh! Is it still there? I can't see it. I think it's sinking. Oh, my line, look at that, the, the mono has snapped off. That's a 130 pound mono snapped. I'm gonna have to go back and re-rig that. What I'm pretty sure happened there was, this stuff that I'm using here is 130 pound, like 60 kilo uh, liter. And I think it must've just got fatigued over time because I've caught Actually, pretty much most of my big GTs on that rod with this this line. So, yeah, it's just a shame it had to happen on a cast. At least it didn't happen on a fish. 
Anyway, I'm just gonna retie that and we'll get around the other side of the island. <laughs> it's literally the opposite side of the island where I just lost that lure. So it takes three to four minutes, maybe five minutes max to get back here. So that is really cool. I like this miniature island fishing so far. Let's try that again. I've got a new slick stick on, different color, but yeah, should work great. Let's, um, yeah, we'll go back to where we were. Okay, we're back to where I was before when I lost that lure. Let's see if we can get a big fish here. I've had a few casts along there and nothing's come up, so we might go another little bit. Okay, I just realized I haven't fished this little corner of the island yet, so there's quite a few nice bombies out here. And it's probably the last few casts we'll have today. Um, I'll start preparing the fish shortly for dinner while we've still got a little bit of light and then tomorrow I was thinking what we might do is see how high we can climb up on the island see if we can get right to the top and we'll do that hopefully nice and early I'm back where I caught the two coral trout we'll do one last cast and that'll be it for the end of the day because it is getting a little bit dark perfect that's about exactly where they were I don't expect to get the same big one again but you never know, there might be Trevally hiding in there or something. No, it doesn't look like it. No, nope. oh, I think a trout just came and had a look at it. All right, one more cast. <laughs> There's always one more cast. But yeah, I think that was a, a coral trout. Just tried to snatch it right in the shallows here. No, nah, he's gone. All right, that's it for the day. We'll pack this up now, we'll cook some dinner. And then when it's dark, We'll um, put out a big line, hopefully for a shark. So here's all our ingredients. I'm not using a heap of fish because I've only got a small pot. So yeah, it's gonna have to be this lot here. These are the camping pots that I have. They're only quite small, but they will do the trick. First thing we'll do is we'll chop up all the ingredients and put them in combinations. This here is coriander. This will go on last, but I'm just gonna chop it now. Just little slivers of that. It's actually Thai coriander. It grows wild up here in the garden. So that's that one done. Now we use half a capsicum, or as you Americans call them, the peppers. I deliberately used yellow because I just wanna have all the different colors of the rainbow in here. So we've got yellow, red, purple, white, green. Let's make them reasonably small. We'll put them in separately. Use a whole tomato, cut out the bit at the bottom there, the stalk attachment, and just cut that the same sort of cubes as the capsicum. We'll use about a quarter of an onion. If you were cooking for a family, you'd probably just use the whole of everything and maybe two, two capsicums, I'd say. I like the onion nice and fine. Then we get a whole red chili. We've cut him in half and just make little slivers of the chili. One clove of garlic, cut the end off, give it a smash and just mince that up with the knife. Now what I could do is use a mortar and pestle or a couple of rocks to really smash those up and make a nice flavor but we actually don't have time. I want to do this while there's still a bit of light. So this is ginger, get that in there. So guys we're about to do an experiment because I forgot the oil. <laughs> I always have oil, I forgot the oil. Let's see if we can make curry respectably okay without oil. It's gonna to be tough because everything's gonna to wanna to burn. Anyway, we'll give it a shot. I'm not gonna let anything get warm. I'm just gonna chuck it all straight in. Well, not all straight in. I'm gonna chuck the uh, chili, onion, garlic, and ginger straight in. So it doesn't burn too much, hopefully. And I might throw a couple of pieces of tomato in just for a bit of moisture. But most of the tomato I'm saving for later on. My idea here is just to keep stirring it so that nothing burns and the moisture comes out of it. Ooh, it actually smells pretty good already. You can't go wrong with garlic, ginger, onion, chilies. What I will experiment with is putting little bits of coconut cream in there because coconut cream is actually quite fatty, so... Hopefully it's okay, it's been in my boat a long time. And hopefully the oil 
will help the cooking process. Oh, it actually smells pretty good already. So that actually seems to be working quite well. I need to crank the heat right up because we've got a fair bit of wind going on here. Once that smells really aromatic, that means it's time to put in the other ingredients. I'm gonna put in the capsicum and the tomato first. That'll add extra moisture. And I just, I want them to, to cook down a little bit. I'd, I'd much rather have slightly firm fish and softer vegetables in this. So I've really cranked the gas up now and it's, it's gonna work quite well, I think. Yeah, the tomatoes are quite soft now and I think this is a good point to put, put the fish in. And then we need a bit more coconut cream. This stuff has actually expired in 2019, but well, I think it says best before. If it says best before and it smells okay, I'm usually okay with it. If it says used by, then that's a different story. But best before, Two years out of date, don't worry about it. Uh, of course, go with your own instinct. Just because I said it's okay, doesn't mean it is. Oh, that's starting to look really good now. We've got a, like a pinkish tinge. It's sort of creamy, white, yellow, pinky tinge. Uh, I might turn that heat down just for the last bit of cooking. We don't want to burn anything now. I actually haven't burned anything through this cook, so the coconut cream, I believe, has worked as oil. Oh yeah, now that is looking good. You guys have to have a look at this before it gets gets too dark to see it. But I'm, I am liking this. Check this out. I mean, that looks pretty good. And then just before we finish, we want some salt and pepper. You always want to season your food. And the last thing to go in is my coriander. That will add an extra freshness, uh, like a zing. Um, when I just tasted that, the tomatoes actually came through really nicely. So, yeah, interesting. Give that a little stir, and we're ready to eat. Mmm, yeah. Have a look. Actually, I'll turn that off. Have a look. It's pretty dark, but hopefully you get a bit of an idea of what it looks like. Look at that. Woo! It's actually looking pretty nice. Well, it got dark again. <laughs> it always does with me. Mmm. This is nice. Before I tell you about how this tastes, I'm gonna sleep just under the, um, the hoochie here. No tent, no mozzie nap. I haven't felt a single sand fly or mosquito, possibly because it's really windy. And the other reason might be because it's such a small island, there's no water on here. But I did hear a little gecko. I, I, he sounded like he was on the beach, so that's a first for me. I've never heard beach geckos before. Anyway, let me tell you how this tastes. Definitely get the coconut cream, coriander, nice fresh fish in there. The tomato adds a juiciness, like a, a really nice wet juiciness. That's, that's actually really nice. Let's try a big lump of fish. Oh, hot. Mmm, fresh fish. A little bit of onion in there. The chili is very mild. Can't really taste the um, the ginger. There's no in the back of my throat. I think I can just taste the ginger there, which is good for me. I'm not that big big on ginger. Mm. So yeah, that's that's actually really nice. Mm. Today's been really cool. The sweet lip first up sashimi that was cool and tasty. Two trout on the same lure. Wow. Um, this cooked up really quite nicely and I'll finish this and when it's completely dark what we'll do is we'll throw a line out hopefully for a shark or something big I used to do it as a kid all the time we used to go out in the boats here and have a big hand line or a big set line over the back of the boat and three or four in the morning the thing would go off and you'd never get a good night's sleep it was fun but as you get older you kind of decide oh, I don't want to do that anymore but tonight until I go to bed, I'm going to leave the line out and see what we can get. There's usually something big swimming around here. I was going to say, actually, I've seen some very big hammerhead sharks, tiger sharks, and a crocodile two kilometers down that way. So, 
Hopefully I'm okay sleeping on the beach like this. Hmm. Anyway. It's um yeah, it's pretty windy. So yeah, we'll give it a shot. I'll see you when it's darker. So it's actually quite dark now. It's probably oh, a bit after 7 pm. Here's our bait. I've got the, the head of the sweet lip, wire trace. I think it's about 200 pound wire trace, 130 pound leader on my big rod. Now, if I chuck that out like that, it's just gonna get snagged on the bottom. So what I've got, I've got some glow-in-the-dark balloons. <laughs> Let's see how they work. I've got one out already. I've never used these before. It says pull, so I'm guessing it um, either has a battery or a, oh yeah. I think that's a battery. Huh, that's cool. Anyway, we'll blow that up and use it as a float. That should be enough. I reckon we should see that. I've been on the island too long. Going, 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 going. Oh, no. Oh, hopefully it works. It just went out. Anyway, tie a knot in it and oh. <laughs> now I saw these in the shop and thought they'd be really cool as a float because then we can see it. <laughs> that balloon is actually really quite bright and um you guys can't see it, but the moon's up there, and I actually don't need a torch to see. Lit up balloon is actually a really cool idea for, for fishing at night. Let me turn the um, head torch on, and you can see what's going on. There you go, I've got the big reel. I'm actually just walking up the other end of the beach because there's a spot up here where I'm out of the wind. So we'll cast this out. Hopefully the balloon survives the cast. And we'll sit out of the wind there we go look at that that's perfect i can i can see where that is turn my light off and just chill out in the dark let's go up here out of the wind oh that's better there's this like little amphitheater here of um like rocks few trees and yeah there's actually no wind here at all let's have a look on the ground yeah just bits of bits of coral shell Oyster, oh there's a nice oyster, look at that. It actually smells a lot like bird. So I'm guessing there's a lot of bird poo here. There'll be birds roosting up in here somewhere. They always roost on these islands. There's the balloon. <laughs> that is so cool. You can just see it out there. I'm just going to chill out here and um, yeah, give it maybe an hour and a half or something like that and yeah, see if anything grabs that line. Okay, it's been like less than 10 minutes and we're on. Oh, got him. <laughs> Can't believe how quickly that happened. Oh, have we lost it? No, no, he's still there. He's still there. Oh, that balloon is still lit up. It's definitely a fish on. Let's go down the water here. Oh, oh. Yeah, like literally 10 minutes and we're into a fish. Oh, he's coming in with us now. Oh, I've got no idea what it is. I'm going to say it's a shark. Oh, right in. Oh, he's just 10 meters out, if that. Oh. You can see the balloon. <laughs> this is crazy. Oh, actually, I think the balloon slid up. That's what it is. Yeah, these fish are still out a long way. So the balloon's at the end of the rod now. I don't know where the fish is. Oh, I think he's got a lot of line out. Oh, where is he? Here he is, here he is, he's in the shallows. What have we got? Okay, let's drag him up. It's looking like a shark. Oh, it's got a bit of weight in it. Oh, let's have a look. What have we got? There you are. Hello little shark, it's a black tip. I'll get that hook out of you. Oh, come on out. Look at that. That literally took 10 minutes and we've got a black tip shark. 
Wow, I would not have thought that would happen that quickly. See if we can get a good look at him. They're called black tip because they've got black tips on their tail. See that? Um, black tip on the top here. Oh, beautiful animal, hey? Let's see if we can check out his mouth. There's his little teeth. Hook right in the side of the jaw. Beautiful, hey? Let's see if we can get him to pop his teeth out without getting bitten. Okay, there we go. Oh, I've got my hands very close to his mouth, but there you, get, you see the teeth there, hey? All right, well, um, take that hook out and let you go, buddy. Hey, that is cool. So cool. And guys, this is why you do not swim at night. Because these guys are feeding at this time of day or night. There we go, the hook's out, he's unharmed. And now, to get him back in the water without harming me. Ah, come on, Sharky. Hey, off you go, buddy. There he goes. No, you're going the wrong way, fish. That's it, now he knows where he's going. Hey, there he is. I'm about as surprised as this balloon looks. <laughs> that shark, like literally not even 10 minutes and he was on. So I've got the rest of the, um, the sweet lip on here. Hopefully that'll work again. And this balloon worked really well. What, what happened was I've got it set like a meter below the surface, but when the, when the shark took it, it just slides up the line like that. So there's absolutely no, no resistance when he takes the bait and he can he can eat it, and you saw that hook went right in the corner of the mouth. That's that's what these hooks are so, so designed to do. So I'm actually hoping for something a little bigger this time. Yeah, we'll chuck this out and see what happens. Okay, let's do that again. I am hoping for a bigger one this time. That was yeah, really easy to, to pull in. There we go. Oh, about 25 meters out or so. We'll walk this back up the beach, exactly what we did last time and just chill out. I couldn't believe it when that line took off the last time. I was like, really, are you kidding me? But it makes sense because at night or, you know, like twilight, um, leave that open actually. Twilight is when sharks feed. And uh, yeah, I reckon we'll, well, I don't know. We, we may get another one, we might not. But that was cool, very cool. We've got another taker. Look at this line, it's going off. Ooh, it's actually going pretty quick this time. Ready, ready, click over and strike. Have we got him? Oh, I think we might've missed him that time. Oh, damn it. Let's bring it in and have a look at the bait. That's been about, oh, another probably 20, 25 minutes. I think we missed a strike on that. I'll let him run for quite a while but I think we've missed him. So we've still got the bait. We must have pulled it out of his mouth. He must have had it just tail grabbed. Anyway, let's chuck that back out and have another go. I just heard that balloon's got a slight leak in it. So I don't know if it's gonna work real well this time, but it's out there and we'll set it up again. That's pretty impressive though. Two sharks in probably just over half an hour. And what I'm doing at the rod tip here, oh, check this out, it's a complete donut. <laughs> what I'm doing is I'm getting the line and I'm wrapping it around a bit of coral and then putting a couple of bits of coral on top of it so that when this takes off, there's the, the reel's open, so there's no drag at all, but I can hear it take off. And then, yeah, I, I wait a little while and then I pick the rod up. Okay, it's been, ooh, 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 we got another one, we got another one. It's only been another six or seven minutes here. This one is actually really going fast. Let's see, is he still there? I think he might have dropped it. He's taken a bite out of that. Just missed the hook, well, by about three inches. Let's chuck that out again. With <laughs> the poor old balloon, actually, we might have to get another one, I think. It's, um, yeah, she's really, she's really gone, that one. Well, that's it, guys. 
my balloon is dead and the bait is gone so a bit of fun it's a shame we didn't get more sharks i really like these glow in the dark balloons that's cool okay let's make my bed Ugh. so what i've got i've got my ground mat and my sleeping bag and there should be a little pillow somewhere inside here there we go and a pillow that's my pillow <laughs> as long as i don't get wet i'll be fine maybe just get rid of some of these vines don't need them in my bed i thought i'd just investigate what the smell is i think it's this little tiny flower just at the end of my finger there they're um really sweet smelling there's a yeah, just a whole vine here it's, it's almost like night jasmine I'll um, yeah, go to sleep smelling that. There we have my bed all set up. I've got the sleeping bag, the ground mat, and a little air pillow. That's all I need. Yep, got this above me. That'll keep me dry. And yeah, we're tucked in behind the rocks. No wind. It's all good. Well, guys, I'm going to bed. Normally, I don't sleep with too many clothes on, but um, yeah, tonight, being on the ground here, I'm leaving my clothes on. <laughs> I've got the sleeping bag as well. So, yeah. It actually feels quite nice. It's um, sheltered inside here, but outside it's blowing a good 15 knots. And I don't, I don't see it slowing down tonight. So hopefully it's not too rough in the morning. We'll see how we go. I still would like to climb up the top of the island um, before we go. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the morning. Morning everybody. It's um yeah I don't know probably just before dawn. The rain's kind of set in. Uh, had a couple of sprinkles last night, but under this it was actually really dry. I had one mosquito this morning buzz me, and no sandflies at all, which is really really cool. Very surprising. I guess uh, little mini island has yeah doesn't have that much uh, wildlife. Anyway, I'll um, spin you around, you can have a look, it's, it's definitely a bit wet out there. See that? Well, you might not be able to see that, the mountain sort of, or the, the, yeah, the island mainland, is all covered by clouds. So we've got quite a bit of water on here. What I might do is make a hot chocolate, have a banana or two. And hopefully this rain will clear up and we'll have a little fish and explore. But yeah, not a bad night's sleep. Definitely better than the um, the log belt, the log bed that I built oh, two or three episodes ago now. Um, that was quite rough sleeping. This was quite hard, but nice and even. I don't know if I mentioned it, but the wind's been blowing like 15 knots plus all night. And this afternoon it's going up to 25 knots. So yeah, I won't spend too long out here. I do want to have a little explore and the tide's actually a meter higher than it was last night so I'll show you that in a second there's um, a lot less of the island this morning than there was last night <laughs> yeah, a meter makes a lot of difference here's my breakfast banana and a little protein ball thing wouldn't be an Andy's fishing video without a banana. <laughs> uh, always, always take a couple of bananas. Mm. Now the rain's just started again, so I'm just just hanging out here. Probably 20 minutes and it'll be gone. So yeah, it's all good. And guys, if you want to see more of this like hoochie camping, I actually quite like it. If there's no mosquitoes or sandflies, it's really nice having just the the, the breeze on you. And also, let me know if you want me to check out other little tiny islands. Like, I've got a couple in mind, actually. Um, one I can probably even walk to, or even, even two I could probably walk to, given the right timing. So, yeah, in the comments below, let me know what you want. Be specific. Um, yeah, so I know what you're doing. People that give me thumbs up, thumbs down, I like it. But, like a thumbs down, I don't know what that means. Like, what don't you like? Is it the colour of my shirt? Is it that I eat bananas <laughs> I'm sure there's a few of you so write a comment and let me know I read all comments mm. 
And a reply to all comments too. I just noticed this little guy sticking his head out of the crack. Have a look. It's a little lizard or a skink. There he is. Hello little guy. What you doing? Hey. He's cute. <laughs> my little friend. I thought I'd give you guys a little update on what's going on in my life. Uh, I'm still looking for a bigger boat. Um, haven't found the right one yet. Because I'm so tall, I need I need something kind of special, and I, I don't have that much money. And none of the boat sponsors from two years ago, I went to the boat show, they said, yeah, 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 we'll do something. Nothing came through, so anyway. We'll find something, hopefully. Um, the other thing, a lot of people have been asking about Nerida, and we haven't been together for quite a while. Um, just didn't work out. She's a great person, we do lots of the same things but sometimes two people just aren't right for each other. So, good luck to her. Um, and guys, I really want to teach you more of the stuff I know. So, keep an eye out for a survey, possibly just one survey. Um, it'll be in the YouTube uh, notifications, I believe. We'll see how we get that going. But, I want to ask you guys the stuff that you really want to learn, the stuff you're not sure about, what interests you, just so I can create um, videos that help you guys the most. So definitely keep an eye out for that. That's about it at the moment. Um, yeah, I'm in good health. <laughs> My knees are still a little bit buggered from hiking. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just I punish them jumping up and down rocks. Um, climbing up there actually, they do. You feel a twinge of pain, but I'm not going to let that stop me. I'm going to keep doing it for a while. <laughs> Let's go for a little wander. Yeah, there's a lot less island over here. And actually, there's no beach here at all. Check this out. Yeah, the beach is all gone and it's just rocks. So there's a few sprinkles of rain. It's actually quite windy. Probably a good 12 knots. Um, but it's not too rough yet. So, yeah. Let's go explore up there. We'll see if we can get right to the top of this island. And then I'll give you a, a really cool view, hopefully. It's actually really quite easy walking because these islands here, they're, they're in the wind and all the vegetation stays low because they keep getting hammered by, by the wind. Oh, look at this. That's a, is that a fig or a flower? No, that's a flower. Flower's about to come up there. I am watching out for snakes on this island. It's, it's the smallest, oh, what was that? Grasshopper, I think. It's the smallest island I've ever camped on. Actually, no, probably second smallest. Um, oh, check these flowers out. Look at these. They are cool. I've got no idea what they are. Some sort of creeper thing. That's, I think that's the leaf off them. That's cool. Um, yeah, but what I've seen is a lot of little lizards, like the, the skink or lizard that was in, in camp this morning. Um, so there's, oh, there's a grasshopper again. So there's definitely some food for snakes. And they can swim, so oh, let's see, let's see which way. This is lichen on, on the rocks. I like lichen. Orange, white, yellow. Really cool. Yes, look at the view. Woo! That's the end of the beach on the uh, one side. And we can't quite see the other side. Okay guys, let's send you up and see what you can see. Is that cool? There's actually quite a bit of rain starting again, so I'm going to run away from it and hide in my hoochie. <laughs> but hopefully you got a good view. I won't see it until I edit the video. But yeah, let me know if I should do this more often. And here we are, five minutes later, back at camp. <laughs> These little mini islands are really cool. When I was preparing this coral trout last night, it occurred to me that it's actually bigger than what I said. I said, I said 41 centimeters. And he is, he's actually more like about 49 centimeters. So the one that I let go, or that dropped off, but I was quite happy to let him go, he was closer to 60, maybe maybe even 65 centimeters. That was a big trout. So that's pretty cool, yeah. I've, I've left him, left this fillet on, the other fillet's gone, but 
they keep better when you leave the fillet with the skin on the bone and everything and yeah a little little wet rag this is my buff um, that'll just keep him nice and cool as well tides definitely high this morning <sighs> gonna get wet feet to go fishing there we go start right here Yeah, doesn't look like there's anything on this side of the island today. Check this little guy out here. He's on a rock that's completely surrounded by water. I can see if I can get him to crawl on me. Hey, come on little guy. Oh, no. <laughs> there you go. Come on, up you go. There you go. Let's go and put him on the main island. As you can see, this rock is completely surrounded by water. Let's just do a nice deed for the day. There you go, little guy. Hey. Off you go, hey? Hey little guy. Hmm? <laughs> hey, see ya. Okay, it's time to go for a fish. <laughs> so the kayak's all packed up, ready to go. And for those of you that want to know, this is the Pro Fish Reload by Viking. Viking kayaks and we'll just make sure the old saying is leave nothing but footprints and take nothing but photographs we're taking half a coral trout but we're definitely not going to leave any rubbish so that looks good let's get underway it's a little bit rougher this morning and it will get a lot rougher later so we'll try and get out of here without tipping over wait for me kayak wait for me oh, okay <sighs> We're in. Okay, let's go. That's always the trickiest part is leaving leaving the shore with the break. I think the first place we'll hit is there's an island over here. We'll see if there's any big GTs or any other other like reef fish off. I've, I've put on another little plastic. They worked well yesterday. Making good progress. We're averaging between five and six point two kilometers an hour. Oh we just hit six point five there. Some of these, um, there's some big swell here. Ooh, there we go, up and down. Some of the big swell pushes us along a bit quicker. The wind's really starting to pick up now. It's getting over 15 knots, and I'm averaging like three kilometers an hour. So what I'm doing is I'm paddling towards the, the mainland here, and hopefully get in the lee of the, the hills. There we are, we're on the reef edge, and we're out of the wind a little bit, so I'm gonna have a cast. Wouldn't be surprised if we get another coral trout along here. Where I am is eight meters deep, but it's only probably two meters over there. Yep, got him. What have we got? It's got a bit of weight in it. Oh, feels like maybe a good sized cod. It's not doing a lot of flipping. Oh, little flip there. Oh, this wind's a bugger. I'm just getting thrown around everywhere. What have we got? Yep, not a bad cod. Ooh, first fish of the morning honeycomb cod that's a oh you got that a long way down there we go hey off you go buddy fight another day yep oh that's a nice one ah, nah it's a small one doing a lot of flipping could be a parrotfish or sweet lip oh here we go little sweet lip tiny little guy that's the same one we had sashimi yesterday but much smaller hey off you go so yeah, the wind out here is still blowing me around a lot. So we'll go right in shore and fish some mangroves and maybe some rocks in there. Okay, there should be some trevally along here, maybe queenfish. Let's see what we can catch. Oh, yep, yep, we got something. Got him, yes. Oh, I'm gonna say it's a trevally. Oh no, that actually looks like a queenfish with trevally. No, no, it's a trevally. There's about 30, 40 <laughs> trevally following. And look at him. Oh, and they stole my plastic again. That's no good. Oh. Oh, they're definitely hungry. He's not a bad size. But yeah, the, the ones following him ate the plastic, which is probably what happened with the sweet like yesterday. Come on, let's get this guy in. Yeah, they're still, still got his friends there. There we go. Beautiful, hey? I'll get you back in the water and try and get one of your friends. 
Right, there you go. He's off. <laughs> oh, but they like to steal that plastic. Look at this, it's gone. It's gone. These are Berkeley Power Bites, and on the packet it says once the fish bite, they won't let go. And I'm guessing there's some sort of scent in these, which is probably why all the other fish that are chasing the fish I've got on still want to try and eat the plastic because it smells good. So the only downside is you keep losing plastics. Anyway, give that another go. So when I'm not paddling into the wind, the wind is actually pushing me along at about two kilometers an hour. I ended up about 150 meters that way and I've just paddled back and oh straight away straight away <laughs> oh lost him and got another one oh yep still on still on here he is oh these ones are smaller <laughs> oh he's right under the kayak come on up little buddy <sighs> that actually happens quite a lot you'll get the big ones then they realize it's not fun being caught and then the little ones come out and they get smaller and smaller so after this one we'll just find another spot and you know what they've eaten my plastic again so this guy's actually bleeding quite bad and the plastic is right down in his throat we'll take him home and eat him sashimi sorry little buddy i wanted to let you go but have a look how far that plastic is can barely see it so guys i think that's it for me today i fished a couple of kilometers of this shore got a few little trevallies and stuff um but yeah the rain's about to set in again so keep an eye out for my survey, um, comment on what sort of videos you want to see, and I'll see you next time. It's been fun. <laughs> should do this more often. Thanks for watching everyone. Please subscribe and click the notification bell so you get notified of my new videos. I do them every week. I'd also like to say a big thank you to my Patreon supporters and people who've donated through PayPal. If you want to see more right now, click the, uh, the links above. Catch you next time.